sick and lost and need a word of healing. Let me show you the truth about now if you will and if you will. It's time to heal your body, mind, your soul, your spirit. Heal your spirit. All it takes is an open ear for those who would hear it. The healing of your sins, the washing of the world. Welcome to another exciting edition of the now international Bible radio show, The Bomb of Gilead. I am your host, Brother Julius, and filling in for my co-host, Brother Will, is my brother all the way from IOG, Birmingham, Alabama, Brother Josh Warren. How you doing, Brother Josh? I am very fortunate to be here, my brother. Another day of life to keep God's commandments, and I'm just here with my family, and I just I pray that this word comes out and edifies the people. In Jesus' name, brother, man, every time I look at the opening, that that scene was shot in Chicago, Illinois, downtown at Buckingham Fountain, and that's Brother Dre, my brother. Uh, shout out to Brother Dre and his wife, Sister Misha, and my brother Will, and man, shout out to Brother Tom, who flew in from ATL Atlanta to do that, to do that video for us. Man, we thank you, Tom, for everything that you do. Uh, shout out to Team Bomb. Shout out, sisters and brothers, to um, everybody who joined in uh, the lesson this morning. I was on, I had the Lord blessed me. Uh, I, I was the, the guest teacher on uh, the Coffee and Bible uh, Hour with Brother Melvin, hosted by Brother Melvin. We had a great time. And I'm looking at some of my brother Drake is in the house. Man, David Eleanor, the Paquins. My brother, Paul Carter, senior, enough said, Paul. David East, wonderful brother. Man, with Josh, well, there's a coach, there is a team. Yes, it is. Shout out to Sister Coach, man, and Beth there, House of God, singing Pastor Pastor Johnson. I just got the phone with him. Uh, also, Noel Berry. And Drew, good evening to you. Uh, oh, boy, Franklin Grant. Oh, there she go. Denise Harris, how you doing, sis? Jamie Israel, Carlos Clay, good evening to you. Who else we got? Looks like Gregory uh, Banner. Is that Gregory R -N. Who else we got, brother? Looks like RN. Okay, RN, okay, RN. Shout out to you. Welcome to the Bomb of Gilead. Oh, there she is, Mom Kina. Hi, Sister Brenda, how you doing? Rhonda Napoli Napolitano, how you doing? Sabrina Jones. Alisa Ellington, my, what is this? Mayla Lee Israel, how you doing? Sam Burns, how you doing? Juanita Carew, good evening to you. Uh, my Kevin Pack, that's the other pack one. Uh, Patricia Badger, how you doing? We still got time to like, share, subscribe, and post this and brothers. Yes. Man, um, mercy, pray for those who are afflicted in the Buffalo blizzard. Yes. yes. Uh, too many tragedies. Too too many tragedies. One too many tragedies. Keep those uh, those people in your prayer, sisters and brothers. Uh, we got hit in Chicago, but it was nowhere near like that. What happened in Buffalo? So keep those people in your prayer, sisters and brothers, because we are all a natural disaster from not having nothing. That's right, brother. But the Lord is still merciful. Man, Brother Josh. Yes, sir. I want to welcome also all of our uh, social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. 
also uh, those who are on Clubhouse, welcome to you also. Yes. Man, Brother Josh, yes, I'm going to open us up with Isaiah 61, verses 1, 2, and 3. Mm -hmm. And then you give us the title and what we're going to be dealing with tonight. And again, my brother, welcome back to the Bomber Gilead Bible Radio Show. Glad to be home. This is an Israel of God production, so please subscribe, like, share, and post. Isaiah 61, 1, 2, and 3, it reads, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Mm -hmm to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. The people who are impacted by this blizzard, they're mourning, sisters and brothers. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praying for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, and as always, that he, might be glorified. May the Lord God of Israel add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and to the doing of his holy <laughs> word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, brother. Brother Josh, what we got? We have a question as the title. Whoa. And that question is, how can you love God but hate your brother? I repeat, how can you love God but hate your brother? Amen. See, Brother Julius, a lot of people say, oh, I love God. No matter what nationality, background, if they profess to be a Christian, uh -huh. they say, I love God. But you have so many people that hold things inside and they actually hate their brother. Now, I want to focus on the brothers, but this can also be between sisters as well. Okay? Because because there's a, there's, there's a problem going on. And it started in the beginning, but before we get to the beginning, I want to show you where I was inspired in the Bible for this title. Can we go to 1 John chapter 4? I'm going to read verse 20 through 21. 1 John mm -hmm. chapter 4. Bend your phones, sisters and brothers. Bend yeah. your telephones to 1 John chapter 4. <clears throat> yes, sir. And we're going to pick this up at verse 20. Man, I'm ready, Josh. When you get it, my beloved brother, please edify the people. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. Mm -hmm. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? That is an excellent question. Excellent. First of all, it starts out with a declaration. If... A man say, I love God. We, we, everybody loves talking about love, love, love. If you love God, but you hate your brother, you are a liar. See, it doesn't go one side. You got to take both parts. Same way with faith and works. You got to also love your brother and love God at the same time. Amen. Secondly, it lets you know, too, that you claim to love God who, who you've never seen in your life. Okay. John declared that. And Jesus said that as well. You have never seen him, but yeah, you love him so much. But the brother that sits across from you at the lunch table, that works with you uh, arm in arm, that you see at Sabbath class. Yes. You hate him. And you see him every day. Every meaning, day. Meaning that you see him. So it shouldn't be a question of whether you should have any kind of love towards him because it's actually a person that's tangible. Somebody that you can go to, you can pick up the phone and call. You can... See on StreamYard. Yes. Somebody you can even go up to their house and visit them. That is the one that you should not be hating. Okay. Because what, what we're going to realize in this short lesson is that you should be able to see yourself and your brother. Therefore, you don't hate yourself. Therefore, you should not hate your brother. That is right. But yet it happens. But because it happens, doesn't mean it just popped up out of nowhere. Because honestly, the feeling of hate and angst towards any human being, especially your brother, started way back when man fell in the garden. Can we bend our Bibles to Genesis chapter 3? Because here, we know the story. We have the Lord giving Adam direction. Adam passed it to his wife. 
She was beguiled by the serpent, gave the information to her husband. He did eat, which is information, not an apple, not a pomegranate, not that cheap watermelon you got at Aldi. But it is absolutely, it's absolute information. Then the Lord came to them, checked them, and asked them, why have you done this? Yes. And after questioning them, getting their feedback, he then gave Satan his sentence, man his sentence, and womankind her sentence. And then, of course, death is on the table, and sin is on the table because they rejected the information from the knowledge, uh, 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 the tree of knowledge, uh, uh, the tree of life. Excuse me, almost misspoke there. So now we're at the point where the Lord is ready to evict the man and woman because before you were rent free, and we know Israel loves anything free. We'll take it. Right. But now we had, we got we got the eviction notice. So Genesis chapter three, twenty two through twenty four. When you get it, my beloved brother, please read. Brother Josh, excuse me, Colleen Hill says there is, from Atlanta, he says there is an echo. Uh, I don't hear an echo. Do you hear echo? No, no, sir. I'm, I'm actually crystal clear. If anybody else out there hear an echo, uh, let us know. I, I don't hear anything on my parts. Uh, and uh, Josh is coming in clear. Yeah. Um, check your system, Colleen. Mm -hmm. I don't hear anything on over here. Yeah, family, let us know if you hear an echo as well, please. Because we want this to get out. Uh, uh, we have so many people that's listening to this show, and we do this because we love you, we love God, and somebody needs this, sisters and brothers. Yes. Somebody needs this. All right, uh, pardon me, Josh. Uh, mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 3 and verse mm -hmm. 22. Yes, sir. It reads, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. Mm -hmm. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Why, why is the Lord even opening it up and saying this? Because now you have, an, you have a, a two beings that have been tainted and corrupted. They were in their purest, purest, innocent form when he was dealing with them. Yes. Take your time. I'm teaching you what you need to know. We'll get there at a certain time. You felt enticed or interested in knowing something and thinking, you know what? Maybe this is some higher knowledge. Maybe it's some lost book we can read. And mm -hmm. the reason why I mentioned that, because we see that today. They had exactly what they needed. They were in the perfect program. Somebody came along and said, let me give you the accelerated version. Let me give you the cliff notes. Yeah. So you can get the get this uh, uh fi this uh final score when yeah. it wasn't time yet. So the Lord said we can have them here. Why? Because if they eat of me, take this information and learn how to live forever, we got a problem. Because we now we have a being that we can't kill, and they will have a significant and close to absolute power here. Matter of fact, it could be absolute if they continue to eat from the tree of life. Right. So we got, so we got to do something here. Go ahead and read, my brother. Verse twenty three. Therefore, the Lord God sent them forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Yes, sir. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. From the Garden of Eden. From the tree of life. So let you know, because we always have been implanted with, oh, they got kicked out of the garden. No, they, they were kicked away from the one that, gave, could, 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 that could give them eternal life. Now, we know the Lord is all powerful. He doesn't need cherubims to protect him, but he's sending a message. I don't want you near me. You are so defiled. I don't want to deal with you. And just to put some icing on the cake, sprinkles yeah. on top, I'm going to put some uh, cherubims, here, cherubims here with a flaming sword to keep you away from me. Now, how does this tie into how one can love God and hate their brother? Easy, because now the sky is the limit because man has already showed he's disobedient and right. with disobedience comes anything. You know, yeah. the liar can become the pedophile. The adulterer can become the murderer. It's on the table. The potential is there, okay? I hope I'm making sense because I really want to show Perfect. Perfect. how this is a problem for all of us, but especially for our brothers. Shame on all of us for the times that we have loved God and hated our brother, by the way. I'm talking to myself, too. Now, let's go over to Matthew chapter 24, because one can say, well, how does this happen? What has increased that has caused somebody to hate their brother and be a hypocrite and love God? 
So they think they love God, by the way. But we're going to find out if they really love God, too, because we're going to put man to the test. Yes. That includes me and Brother Julius and everybody listening. We got to put ourselves to the test. So what has happened? What has increased? What has abounded that has caused many to just not love one another? Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. When you get in my beloved brother, can you please read? And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And we see that today. You drive by, you see somebody walking on the side of the road and they're stranded. They could honestly be stranded. But you say, I'm not going to pick them up. They may jack my car and take mine. Right. You see somebody, please, brother, can you spare a dime? I'm not going to get close to him. He might be one of those strong homeless brothers and, and take me down and take all my money. Right. The love of many, the love of many has waxed cold, especially when somebody hates their brother. And let's say, hmm, how can we see that? The Bible not only interprets itself, it gives us examples. Let's look, let's look at of an example of somebody truly hating their brother. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4 and look at this horror story. Man. Because in order to hate somebody, you really have to have some kind of intense feeling churning inside of you. Something that you're willing to display and not care about the repercussions. Right. I just saw a clip of a brother in an interrogation room. Killed his cousin for $300 worth of food stamps. And when he got in the interrogation room, his woman was in there with him. And she said, baby, I'm going to be there with you to the end. Yeah, right, sister. You better get out of Dodge because that brother has a sentence ahead of him. Yeah. And the first thing he said was, how could I be so stupid? Because the love of because of, because iniquity has abound, the love of many has waxed cold, cold enough to kill your cousin in cold blood to get some food stamps. Which you gonna which you probably gonna sell anyway. Exactly for two fifty. Three hundred dollars mm. worth. Mm. Genesis chapter four. Everybody knows about Cain and Abel. We're gonna read it again. Genesis four and one. When you get it, my brother, please read. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. Yes. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And I want you to continue to read my brother, but I have to jump in because there is actually a doctrine out there saying because Cain was so evil that Satan actually was his father. The book tells you that Adam knew his wife Eve and bare Cain. Right. Stop playing with the games. All right. Go ahead and read my brother. And she again bare his brother Abel. Yes. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But mm -hmm. Cain was a tiller of the ground. Yeah, their occupation, so we know what they do for a living. So food for thought. Get out there and work, brothers. Go ahead and read. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Praise God. Good work, Cain. That's what we all need to do is present an offering. We ain't talking about burning no animals. The sacrifice of your lips, your right. good works, keeping the commandments shows you exactly what you're trying to do. So he's doing his work. Let's keep going, my brother. And Abel, he also brought up of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. So this is and, the firstlings of his flock. Yes. Notice, it didn't say anything about Cain's firstlings. Nothing. He just gave something. All right? Sometimes your effort shows you how you really want to serve God. Go ahead and read, my brother. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Go ahead. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance failed. No, 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 Cain. No, 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 Cain. We ain't got time for that, Cain. I don't know why you're angry, because you were you knew what to bring, and you gave what you wanted to give. Your brother did his best. That's why the book emphasized on his firstlings and the fat thereof, talking about the abundance of it. So now you're mad all of a sudden. Be mad at yourself. But the problem is because you have allowed uh, iniquity to abound in you right here, right here. Yes. Now you want to not take accountability for it, but now you want to project that anger upon your own brother. Go ahead and read, my brother. Verse 6, and the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wrong? And why is thy countenance fallen? Yes. If thou doest well, this was yeah. merciful God, this merciful yeah. God. Yes, if yeah. thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? Yes, sir. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Yes. And unto thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. Cain, if you did what you're supposed to do, it's no problem. Okay? Hey, I gave you the instruction. Great job. Unless you didn't do your best. Yes. If you didn't sin like at the door. What does that mean, Brother Josh? Because the Lord understands what's going to transpire because of his attitude. Yes. You, the same way I said earlier, that because Adam and Eve fell in the garden and 
the sky is the limit for sin, the same thing goes for Cain. Because now up here, he now has hatred boiling inside of him. Keep reading, my brother. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Wait a second. Wait a second. Why are we seeing murder? You were just chatting with your brother. Hey, bro, uh, you know, we out here putting in the work, right? But see, the whole time he is harboring something up here. That hate. Man. This is the same brother that you nursed from the same woman from. You were raised in the same house with. You had both parents in the house, so there's no excuse of, well, I didn't have a, my father in my life. I didn't have my mother in my life. My parents didn't hug me enough. Teach. What is your problem, brother? That is your brother, man. Attitude. Brother Judas talking about the attitude, that hatred. I'm glad they made the graphic that way. You got a contrast. You got a lighter font. You got a darker front to make you focus and see there's something wrong here. There's an imbalance. This brother has an imbalance. He has hatred, and it has led to him killing his own brother. Go ahead, read, brother. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and Cain talked with his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rolled up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? Yes. And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? No, you could no, because you're a bold faced, black lip liar. You know exactly where your brother is because you killed him and now you're lying. You don't broke two commandments. And guess what? The law hadn't even been written down in stone yet. So, learning something on our way to learning something, the law has always been here. I'm still trying to figure out what is his attitude against his creator? Self accountability. What is his attitude with God? Right, brother. You. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, you see how your, your mindset, your attitude, like Brother Josh say, when you turn away from God, the devil will catch you. Yes, he will. He going to catch you. Revelation 2nd chapter said they have not known the depths of the devil. <laughs> Once he gets you, he can get you and twist you up all kind of ways. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, Josh. Um, no. No, no, you're right, you right, on, right on time, right on point, my brother. Man. He can catch you, and he caught Cain right here. And my, look at that. He can smile with the Lord. The yes. Lord could have killed him right there. Yes, mercy. He can smile with God. Mercy. <laughs> and my, my brother's keeper. Yes, you are, Cain. What verse was that, brother? We had verse 10. Go ahead, please. And he said, what, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And that's just some. Um, that's just the poetry of the Bible. Cain, you can read in the book, in the new book, that Cain's work spoke for him. But the Lord understood something has happened here, and the Lord sees all. He actually wants to see what we're gonna say. Exactly. I ask you where your brother is. I don't know. Okay, night violation. Am I my brother's keeper? Disrespect. And now I so I have to check you and say, well, your brother's blood is crying to me. Something happened here. Go ahead and read, my brother. Verse 11, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Go ahead. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Oh, now, now, now the little pansy voice and kicked in. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes, your brother cried when you beat him to death. Or whether you slew, beat him, cut him, whatever, he cried too. All right, so don't give me that, brother. Oh, now I'm worried about what's going to happen to me. Now, again, on your own time, keep reading a few verses after this, and you see the mercy of the Lord. And the Lord says, I tell you what, anybody bothers you, they got a problem with me. Matter of fact, let's read that. Verse 15, my brother. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, then it shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Food for thought. Show you how powerful our God is. He even shows mercy for the murderer. So just because a brother is on death row or the brother committed some crime, he's locked up for selling dope, don't give up on him. Start a prison ministry and go out and talk to the brother and uplift him and show him he can still get salvation behind bars. Jesus. But the focus is Cain, of course. Because he hated his brother and the Lord showed him mercy. But what I found disgusting is somebody in his lineage. Yes. Somebody who should know better because you killed one of our family members. Yes. Get 
one of his descendants called Lamech. Let's skip down to verse 19 and read about Lamech with his sick self. Go ahead and read. <laughs> and Lamech took unto him two wives. Yeah. The name of the one was Ada and the mm -hmm. other Zillah. So he got his two wives. Now we got the narrative. He's sitting back chilling. And now he's going to start talking foolish. Go ahead and skip down to verse number 23, my brother. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Yes. Hark hearken to my speech. Yes. For I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. Why are you bragging about this, brother? Why are you bragging about taking somebody's life? You got that same spirit your forefather had, Cain. And it still stems down from the fall in the garden. Somebody might say, well, Josh, they just disobey God and believe the lie of Satan. When you go against the tree of life, you got to go with the opposite, death. So now everything that can happen reflects death. He is bragging about taking somebody's life. Go ahead and read, my brother. If Cain shall be a being sevenfold, truly Lamech 70 is sevenfold. And that's a problem a lot of us today have. Well, if the Lord let him get by, then I know I'm going to get by in abundance. It don't work like that. That that mercy was for Cain and Cain only. Okay, Cain. so don't you take upon yourself to do wrong or go against God's commandments and think, oh, gosh. well, I'm going to get some more mercy. Let me just keep going. And that's the mentality of a lot of people who believe they are saved already. If I'm saved, I can go out here and commit adultery. I can lie, cheat, steal. I can even become a preacher and lie to the people. Don't don't take advantage of that grace that you love to abuse. That's now, mercy. Not tempt the Lord your God. Plain and simple. Amen, brother. So I want to show you again, this hate stems from disobedience. And we see how one brother hated another brother. Another man hated several brothers and bragged on it. Let's go to the next spot, my brother. Thank you for this reading. Let's go to Genesis chapter six. I hope everybody is getting some understanding here. Tonight's lesson, sisters and brothers, brought to you by IOG's Birmingham's own brother, Josh. How can you love God? And hate your brother. My Lord. Food for thought. Food for thought, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. Oh, my gosh. The kingdom of God is righteousness. Yes. Genesis chapter 6, Josh. Yes, sir. Starting at verse, we're going to read 5 through 7. When you get it, my brother, please read. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Mm -hmm. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And notice this is Genesis 6, but it's just as good as a, as a scripture for 2022 because the imagination is so crazy now. Now man is not a woman. A woman is not a man. I had to get a physical the other day and the woman shook her head and said, sir, I'm so sorry to ask you this, but is your father uh, a male or female? I what? said a male. Yes, sir. What? For a life insurance policy, I had to ask this question. And sir, the second question I have to ask you is, is your mother a female? I said, yes, ma'am. And we both shook our heads. And she had to be politically correct and even in her emotions because we both knew this is foolishness. So the imagination of man is on evil continually. And they come up with everything. What and kind of folly is this? Tis a season. <laughs> Literally. So... We see here that the thoughts on their hearts are evil continually. Let's keep reading and see how the Lord felt about it, my brother. And it repented the Lord at verse 6. It repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. So God has feelings, by the way. Yes. We think, we think, oh, he's so far away from us that he doesn't feel. No, he has feelings, and we hurt him on a daily basis when we break his commandments. Teach, teach Josh. Go ahead and read, my brother. And the Lord said, I would destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, mm -hmm. both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. And Lord, I hope you hear me. You didn't do nothing wrong here. I, I know what the Lord knows this, but it repented him that he made man because he's disappointed. <laughs> I gave you everything you needed in the garden and you felt like it wasn't enough. You really believed that it wasn't enough. And we have these horrible examples that we see nowadays of people thinking it's not enough. I need to get more. I need to have so much more that I'm willing to hate somebody and I'm willing to do things to them because I think I need more than what God has for me. Wow. People love saying what God has for me, it is for me. Well, yes, th it's right here. This is, what he, this is what he has for you and it's enough. But yet you have people in this world who think it's not enough. And we better read about them, unfortunately. Let's go to Proverbs chapter one. 
my because goodness. my brother, we read about the wickedness of Cain and how he was upset that he didn't give enough, but he felt like that it was enough to take his own brother out. And now, as I said before, sin begets sin and begets sin. So not only do you get angry, you kill your brother. Then you lie to God. And then you get an attitude towards God, like Brother Julius said. What did the Lord do to you? The only thing the Lord did to you, he gave, he gave you everything you needed, brother. Proverbs chapter 1, we're going to read 10 through 18. Proverbs chapter 1, 10 through 18, when you get it, my beloved brother, edify the people. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Yes. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. Without, yes. without cause, Josh. Yes, brother. Pause right there, my brother. That hurts. Now, this is Proverbs here. Somebody said, ooh, that was way back then. You see it in Chicago. You see it in Birmingham, Alabama, or England. You see the youth saying, hey, man. I'm enticing you. Come on, let, let, let's ride down here. These cats got some J's on, some Jordans. Let's go and handle the business. Well, I, I got I got to go home and do my homework. Also, you being a lame now? Come on, man, let's go handle these ends. Why? Oh, because they got different color clothes on? You wear blue, he wear red? You throw up a, a certain sign, he throws up a certain sign? Same thing. The Bible has every answer, every scenario that we need to look for. Go ahead and read, my brother. I, 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 that, that, what, what you just said brought me back to verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Don't do it. Oh my gosh. They say, Brother Julius, they say during the D.A.R.E. program era, say no to drugs. Say no to sinners enticing you. Lawbreakers, by the way, that's a sinner for all those that think the law is done away with. Go ahead, my brother. Again, verse 11, if they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privately for the innocent without cause. Go ahead, brother. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave mm -hmm. and whole as that they go down into the pit. And what else? We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. So let's rob them. Let's get that money that they worked so hard for. He's got a family at home to feed. I don't care. Let's take the money anyway. Let's take his car so he can't get to work. He might even get so upset because he got robbed. He might want to go out and steal himself. And sin touches, begets sin. Blood touches blood. And everybody is not committing sin because they hate their brother. Let's take everything. Let's have this substance. And look what they do with the substance, my brother, when they get it. Go ahead. Verse 13. We should find all precious substance. We should fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. One purse. We got a pot now, and now we're going to take what we want out of it and do what we want. Why? Because we hate our brother. And these same people say, man, I love God. Or they say, on God, man, with a gold grill and a chain. On God, bro. On God. You don't know God, brother, if you hate your brother. You are seriously getting together and saying that you want to take not only things from your brother, but take your brother's life. Sad my coworker, brother. Josh, my coworker. A part-time, his part-time job, a security officer at the mall. They bum rushed him, two or three brothers bum rushed him and shot him. Didn't get a chance to, to defend himself, just shot him cold blood. Rob, uh, busted the glass. And 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 for what? So you can have for for what? What about his family? What about his daughters? Right. Sad. Who, who gonna take? They don't. They don't care, and, that, and that's what they don't think about. And you know what? I love the term you use. I would like to rephrase it and say some bums rushed him. Sad, sad, my brother. Verse fifteen, my brother. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. Go ahead. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. And we say, ooh, hit them again. World star hip hop. They got their phones out. Yeah, get them, get them. You run into evil. How could you just, you know, you run into it and you recording it instead of trying to break it up. But then if it's your family member, somebody help him. Y'all stop. But when it's, <laughs> how could you say you, and then you're going to go to church and praise God, huh? That's it. Truly wicked. 
How can you love God but hate your brother? Go ahead and read, my brother. Verse 17, surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. Mm -hmm. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk proudly for their own lives. So guess what? Even though you're doing all this wicked and because you hate your brother and you're trying to set him up to do things, you actually setting yourself up. It's there like you it's like a net that you that you set up, and you're the little bird that gets caught in it. You're the little moth that gets caught in the spider web. The whole time you setting yourself up because you hate your brother. Sad, sad world. All stem from sin. Again, how can you love God but hate your brother? But but before we d think deeply into this, how does this happen, my brother? It all starts with my thoughts. So how does this happen? Let's let our beloved brother James explain it to us. James chapter 1, we'll read 12 through 15. Yes. yes. Pulling out a phone, recording it. Then you post it online. And then yeah, you say, yeah. go ahead, brother Julius. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, sister, brothers, I say it and I say it all the time. One thing about the lake of fire, it's like it, 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 it's like elastic. Yes. It's always room for the next center. Yes. Always room for the next center. So so think think about that. Think about that. Look what look what kind of world we live in because we got the number one bestseller in the creation, the Bible, the Word of God, the mind of God, but the number one mistaught and misunderstood. But you love that juicy novel. But somebody come and bring your lesson like this to you. Oh, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Right. That ain't me. I don't want that. But you love the good juicy novel. Yes. You know what? I'm not a judge. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like my brother Josh said, a brother or a sister who does this, you, if I can speak to them, and I'm going to give you something to share with them. Remember what the scripture says. Remember, whatever you sow, that shall you reap. That shall you reap. You you can hide it from man, but God said, "Can any hide himself from me that I don't see him?" Mm. Food for thought. James chapter one, my brother. Yes, sir. See, this is where I, this is what I love with brother Josh. Brother Josh, he gonna bring it to you in the raw. I'm just piggybacking, piggyback on it, but it's food for thought for all of us. That's right. That's what this program is all about. That's Everything right. is relevant now. <laughs> James chapter 1? Yes, sir. We'll read 12 through 15, my brother. You get it? Please read. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Mm -hmm. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Now, we live in a world where when people mention temptation, they think of the sister with the cleavage out, the short skirt, the brother with his, all his muscles out. No, no, no. You can be tempted to kill your brother, to hate your brother. You're tempted, like I said before, to take them Jordans. You kill your brother. You wear a 13. He wears a nine and a half. So you can't even wear the shoes, but you want to kill him anyway just so you can have them jade. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. So you can have what? Pardon? So you can have his what? His jays. I thought the law said thou should not covet. That's right, brother. That's right, brother. What's wrong with working? And give your own. Yes. Remember, remember, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Brother reap. Josh, verse 13. Yes. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Yes. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But what, but my brother? But every man, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So you can't blame nobody. Cain can't blame nobody for what he did. Adam and Eve can't blame anybody for what they did. Well, Brother Josh, they had just came into the creation. They had the God of all creation with them. He instructed them. They have nobody to blame. The individuals mentioned in Proverbs 1, they have nobody to blame. Yes, some of us might have not had the right uh, uh, representatives or people to look up to in our lives, but guess what? You still have a mind. You can't you can't blame somebody, okay? It's all on you. You are enticed. But look how the wheel turns. Go ahead and read, my brother. Verse 15. Then, when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Mm -hmm. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. 
And that is why we see death in this creation. The, nobody's living. You, if, the book tells you you can't go past a thousand. You got somebody not making it to their 18th birthday. Mm. It brings forth death. And that's why we see this pattern of death. Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, and anybody that breaks God's commandments. It conceives, sin conceives, and now it becomes sin. And it becomes, I mean, sin is here and it becomes death. It brings forth death. That's what we're dealing with, brothers and sisters. These are people who hate their brother. Again, we're not getting away from the part how can one love God? Because you got a lot of people that hate their brother and love God, by the way. You got a lot of preachers out there that claim to love God, but they really hate their brother and their congregation. <laughs> so, so there's the end of verse 15, right? Yes, sir. Let's go to Matthew 15 real quick. Because if one says, or if one understands how sin can conceive itself, it defiles them. That's what happens. That's why they become the way they are. That's why it happened to Cain and anybody else that hates their brother. They have defiled themselves. Now, this is Matthew chapter 15. We're going to read 1 through 3, and then we'll skip and read 17 through 20. This is the Lord Jesus dealing with them sorry Pharisees who think they know everything. They come to him talking about a tradition of washing hands. But the Lord wants to check them on something else. 15 and verse 1, my brother, when you get it, please read. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, mm -hmm. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. You sound like a respected person. You worried about the tradition of elders and not God's commandments. Why are they transgressing the tradition? Who cares about the elders? They, they, they die. God don't die. Go with the eternal one who has the eternal law. Go ahead and read. Verse 3, but he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? I love our Lord and Savior because he was he was so sharp. He was so sharp. Man. And he's one of the few, he's the only person, you know how people sometimes will answer a question with a question and they'll yeah. frustrate you. Man, yeah. answer the question. The Lord can answer it by asking a question. That's how sharp he was. And that's how sharp we should be when dealing with this word. Skip down to verse number 17, my brother. Do you not yet understand that whatsoever enter in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? And I love it's very straightforward. Don't you know whatever you eat goes into your stomach and you boo-boo it out? That's what he said to him. Sometimes yeah. the Lord got to talk plain to Israel like that because Israel is real. So sometimes you got to talk to him a certain way. All right. Yeah. Go ahead and read, my brother. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. That is what makes you defiled. It's the stuff that comes from your heart, not the blood pumper. I'm talking about up here, this mind, this yes, mind sir. can get so corrupted and defiled that you will hate your brother. And now the Lord's going to outline what goes on in this heart. Go ahead and read, my brother. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, mm -hmm. murders, yes. adulteries, yes. fornications, yes. thefts, yes. false witness, yes. blasphemies. Yes. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defile not a man. And you got some trash Bible versions out there that put in parentheses, and thus Jesus abolished the dietary law. No, you will be abolishing that lake of fire if you don't stop lying on him. He's telling you this is what defiles a man. When you have that corrupt mind, that disobedient mind to do what God says, and then you go along, and then now all of a sudden so many things get conceived. Evil thoughts, murderers fornications, adulterers, adulteries. And if there was enough ink, he could write out every sin there was, but we will run out of ink right now. This is the problem. This is why people claim to love God, but hate their brother. But because you are this way, because you are this way, there is a way to deal with this. All right. You don't have to hate. If you do what God says and incorporate his commandments into your heart, instead of doing all the other stuff that defiles it, you can work towards not hating your brother. You can build with your brother. And we're going to find out about that. But guess what? People love talking about the law. We love the law too. Let's see what the law says about hate. Let's go to Leviticus, the 19th chapter. We'll read one verse, se verse 17. Leviticus. Why we're, why we're turning yeah. to, Le to Leviticus, why we're turning, sister brother, to, to Leviticus, the 19th chapter, I want to ask Brother Josh a question. Yes, what sir. What we just read right here, where Jesus said, do you not understand? How can the pastors don't Read this out of the Bible to their congregation. 
How can the right. pastors that oh we love y'all and, and y'all get ready, we're gonna do this and, and we're gonna do that, and oh woman thou art loose, and oh God is love. What's wrong with just reading the Bible? Why you gotta go off in the hoop, holler, change your voice? I saw the Lord, I, he heard nothing, and the people saying, Well, well, well what exactly? You'll be in a you'll be like in a well without water, no hope. Talking about some well. He ain't said nothing out the Bible, yeah. but Pastor Show taught that lesson. <laughs> Woo, Deacon Show said that prayer. Mm. What did you learn out of the Bible that can impact your life to say, I need to stop doing this? Right. I need to change. And I need to learn about this Bible. I need to learn about this God. I need to I need to understand when the last time your pastor spoke on the feast of the Lord and what they represent. Josh, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, that's beautiful, brother. That's beautiful. Because it, it makes it makes people have to question their leadership as well as themselves. Why am I sit, sitting under somebody that's not feeding me spiritually? And they're feeding off of me financially. Why spend our money for that which is not bread? Great question. From the Lord, by the way. Whew, boy. Boy, boy, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How could you love God? And hate your brother. This is real talk. This is so relevant. Yes. Look at the world, sisters and brothers. Look at the world. And they stay telling you peace on earth and goodwill toward men. That ain't for now. Look at the world. That's when the Lord come back and fix everything. That's right, brother. Oh, man, Josh. This is your lesson. No, no, no. We all in this together. It's a family reunion. Remember you talked about that earlier? Yes, sir. We here, baby. Yes, sir. Leviticus 19 and 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. I'm going to read it again. Yes. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. If you want to expound on it, my brother, go ahead. I see it in your face. Oh, man. <laughs> mm. The word of God is designed to correct, to correct us and save you. We are the clay. He's the potter. We are the created. He's the creator. He is trying to instruct us into righteousness. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Because, and let them have dominion. I want to create a whole planet of God with the mindset that the God has, the God has, has which is righteousness which is patience, love, all the fruits of the spirit, tolerance, long suffering. Yes. A government of God with Brother Joshua, no shutdown. No shutdown. No filibuster. No, no shutdown. What, what's wrong with it? We don't want that. No. You know why? Because the Bible said that men love darkness rather than light. That's right, brother. Josh, that's my that's thought. Not. That's all right. That's good. So we see where, like how Brother Julius expounded, how people can be because they don't want to really deal with God. The book tells you, if you, according to what the uh, what the Lord says, you shouldn't hate your brother at all, in your heart, at all. And if there's an issue with them, you, you, you deal with him, you check him now, because if you check him in love, sin won't come upon him. He will learn to correct his ways. Brother, don't cheat on your wife no more. Stop lying. Don't, don't, don't uh, uh, covet. Don't bear false witness. Don't uh, 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 don't keep Sunday, keep the Sabbath day. All this stuff keeps sin from being on him. So now we're in the learning process here on how to truly love our brother. All right, we read a lot of hate scripture. Now let's read about some love here and some correction. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 18, my brother. We hey, see brother a God, And they will tell you, and we always ask that Israel of God, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with the Ten Commandments? Just 10. Well, right. brother Julius, uh, it's 613 laws in the Bible, and 613 laws. I said, but the Lord gave you 10. What you going to do? You going to break the other 613? That's right. And, and brother, I, I, I love when that is brought up because I tell people, on your own time, just Google the 613 laws of the Mizvot, all right? M-I-Z-V-O-T, and it is a Talmudic Jewish uh, 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 teaching. So... I, and like I told Brother Jared uh, the other day, you say there's 613 and man can't keep that, but your municipality has thousands of laws and you do your best to learn each and every one of them. Why? Because you don't want to get that ticket. You don't want to get that lean. Make it play. 
You're going to do all you can. Like the sister said in here, most of these churches got ATMs in them. I call that another terrible minister and another terrible message. That's the ATMs they got in, the, in their churches. <laughs> so we got Matthew chapter, uh, what we just read? Matthew, yeah, Leviticus yeah, 19. Matthew 18. All right, we're going to read 15 through 17, family. Matthew 18, 15 through 17. Let me get in my blood, brother Julius. Please edify the people. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, Mm -hmm. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. No, no, no. Put it on Facebook and Instagram. Him and you alone. Food for thought. Go, go ahead, my brother. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Yes. Yes. You've gained him. Man, attitude, your yes. approach and your attitude, your demeanor. You can drive people away or you can draw them. Yes. The Lord say, draw them in love. Yes. In meekness of, of mind and meekness of heart, sisters and brothers. Yes. You, not, not like Cain did. Am I my brother's keeper? Humble yourself, Cain. What? 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 Whew. Man. Mm. Verse 16. Yes, sir. But if he would not hear thee, yes. then take with thee one or two more that is in the mouth of two or three witnesses everywhere may be established. You see the order of God? Okay, so it doesn't work the first time. That's okay. Now I got something else. Let's bring in some more brothers and let's get some witnesses. That they're trying the whole process is to gain the brother, not to hate him, not yes. to put his business out on front street, not to humiliate him. It is to gain the brother. I got some witnesses. Let's look at the other step. Go, go ahead, my brother. Verse 17, and if he shall neglect to hear them, telling them to the church. Yes. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be as unto thee as a heathen man and as a publican. Now, first of all, you got to be a righteous church. Can't tell it. We live in a time, unfortunately, even in the truth, where you can't tell a lot of people your business. Josh, where's Jeremy going to start it? In the house of God. Oh. Yeah. In the house of God, the church, the church, like they like to say. Ha! Ha! Now give me some water. You know, that's when they look to get their water. To, anyway, so this says that take it to the church. Bad, right. I, I, I need to slap myself in the face. Take it to the church. And if they don't hear them, the body, the righteous body, uh -huh. we're going to look at you like you're a heathen man, a public, and somebody that doesn't want to do what God says, basically. But it didn't say kill him. And it didn't say hate him, but you ought to deal with him from a distance. Hey, bro, we, sis, we can't deal with you right now. You're not trying to correct your ways. Yes. All right. Let's go to the next spot. Man. I've been waiting to bring this out because I don't hear this book brought out too much. The book of Philemon or Philemon, <laughs> right before Hebrews. <laughs> Uncle Phil, whatever you want to call him. Uncle Phil? Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, Praise sir. God for the lesson because it's so timely and it's so needy, uh, needed, uh, sisters and brothers. Uh, again, again, it's the Bible is designed for us to work out our salvation. Mm -hmm. But people don't want to see that because it takes work for us to change. But we want to love God. We want to go to heaven. <laughs> And we want to come as we are, not to the Lord. You can't. That's right. You can't read that. That's right. You can't read that. You got to come with a humble heart, with a repentant mind. And you got to be sorry. And you got to, like Jesus said, you got to be just like a little child. You got to be ready to be taught. That's right. Man, the law of love a humble and contrite spirit, sisters and brothers. Yes. The book of Philemon. Yes, sir. Philemon. We're going to read, we read chapter one. Chapter one, <laughs> Uncle Phil. Chapter one, we're going to read verse one, then we're going to skip down to verse 10, family. Philemon, chapter one, verse one. You get it, my brother? Please read. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. So Paul just introduces himself saying, I'm a prisoner of Jesus. I'm locked in. This is the kind of 25 to life you want to have. There being you go. A being a prisoner of Jesus, not that 25 to life in the, in the, in, in the state prison. You know what Give I'm saying? Give me life with Jesus. That's right. Life without the possibility of parole. I don't want to leave him. That's <laughs> what we want. So Paul is introducing himself. Skip down to verse 10, my brother, and read. I beseech thee for my son, 
Onesimus, yes. whom I have begun in my bonds. And that's how it is with brothers like Brother Julius, Brother Bowie, all these brothers. They deal with us like children, and they say, my beloved son, in the faith, that I have dealt with in my bonds. Yeah. He's talking to us because he's actually laying out, he's, he's kind of buttering up the brother to say, I'm bringing somebody forward here, uh, Onesimus, and this brother here was a, a certain way at one point, but we got to deal with him a little differently now. Go ahead and read, my brother. Which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. Man, he's a sell dope. We only deal with him. Well, if he was a good dope dealer, that means he can pass out flyers real, real well. Teach, Josh. If he was an adulterer and a sweet talker to all the women, maybe he has a gift of gab to speak the word of God to people. People that are in a low state, he can bring them up. Maybe he's so stubborn, he won't scare nobody. He'll take a bullet. That means he'll stand for anything for the word of God. This is what we need Teach, in our army. So just because he was this way, that's okay. He's making a change. Now, he seemed unprofitable at a certain time, but don't hate your brother. Go ahead and read. Man. Whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is my own bowels. Yes. Whom I would have retained with me, that mm -hmm. in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. Go ahead. But without my but without thy mind would I do nothing. That thy benefits should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. So now we're gonna look at his behavior. Paul and, and here's a beautiful thing about. The yeah. word of God. It will address how you were, but when you clean yourself up, it is willing to accept how you are now. Go ahead and That's read. That's right, brother. That's right. Verse 15. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest receive him forever. Go ahead. Not now as a servant, but above a servant. Yes. A brother, beloved. Yeah. Especially to me, but yeah. how much more to thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. In the Lord, I mean, in the spirit, the brother is walking like us now, and he can be our brother according to the flesh if he wants to be. Yes. This is the change, the transition he has made. We could we dealt with him at a certain time, and the brother decided to clean himself up. The brother said, you know what, man? I don't want to be in the streets no more. Let me take that blue rag out of my pocket. Let me stop with all the, 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 the threatening and the dope dealing and poisoning my people. He has changed. So please just listen to me, because I'm Paul. Listen to me. And me being a prisoner of Jesus, I'm vouching for him. Watch how Paul vouches for him. Go ahead and read. Gosh, what God has clear is called out that not unclean. That's Don't right. Don't call him coming no more. That's He's right. He's a new creation in Christ. Yes. She is, is, is now a new creation in Christ. That's right. That's oh, right. Man. Remember, sisters and brothers, we didn't know what we are. We didn't know what, uh, we didn't always know what we know now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Verse uh, 16. Did I get that? Yeah, you read 16. We have 17 now. Okay. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. So if you love me and you like, man, we're going to hang with you, Paul, you our boy, then he's your boy too. He's you your go. brother too. Okay? Well, we love God. Well, guess what? You're going to love him too. Teach. Got to have both together, not one without the other. Out the other. Go ahead and read, my brother. If he had wronged thee or owed thee anything, Put that on my account. Ooh, put Ooh. that on my account. You Ooh. can't get Israel to put anything on their account. Let me, let me get $5. No, sir. But Paul is saying, I don't care what this brother did in the past. He is our brother now. And you take him in just like you took just like you took me. And you know what? If you want to truly believe if he's legit, put that on my account. I'll stand for him. He is our brother now. I'm not taking anything away from the sisters. You can take this message the same way. I just want to deal with the brothers because for some reason there's some animosity all of a sudden nowadays. I'm talking about within the truth. Well, he got a better car than me. Work hard and get the car. Well, he always doing stuff for the feast committee. Get your butt up and put an apron on to help with the feast. There you go. Match it. I always say you can beat another brother. You talking about my fist? No, no. Beat the brother getting to class early. Beat him helping clean up the church. Take care of the children. Do yes. all kind of things to help edify the body of Christ. Yes. So you can show that you love God and love your brother. We've been talking about the hate part. Let's show how we can love our brother. Now, with loving your brother this way, it comes from something. It comes from the word of God and instructing us to walk in a different way. Now, now, we, now we're transitioning now, okay? Amen. Amen. So, Let's go to Matthew 22. We're going to read 36 through 40. We've got three more spots after this. I appreciate everybody's patience. I hope I hadn't been too long-winded. No, brother. 
we need we all need this. Yes. We, we all need this. That that, uh, that Thursday night football can wait. <laughs> Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I'm Crazy. trying to, hey brother, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it to the wilderness and out of the wilderness. Yes. I'm trying to be in the first resurrection. Yes. And I'm, I, I, hey man, nothing, sister, brother. What will you not give up to to obtain salvation? Right. You could. Hey, hey. They have what they call them uh, DVD recorders. What do they have? What they call them? You record, oh, DVR. You record all that stuff. DVR. Yeah, DVR. Like you said, you, football. You, yeah. Yeah, the the, the, yeah. The, 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 listen, the the Super Bowl is their first resurrection, all right. And then getting eternal life—that's your end zone dance. So, so <laughs> desire that. The Bears can wait, brother Julius. So I know y'all love the Bears up there, but they they can wait. Lou deserves. <laughs> Matthew twenty-two. We're gonna read thirty-six through forty. When you get it, my brother, <laughs> please read. <laughs> Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Yes. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Yes. This is the first and great commandment. Yes. And the second is like unto it. What is thou it? Shalt, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Yes, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now you got some buffoons out there that say, see, these are the only two commandments you got to keep. I tell people, well, read 19, uh, chapter 19, verse 16. He tells a young rich ruler to keep the commandments, the Ten commandments. Commandment. So it's bigger than that. Matter of fact, it's mentioned right here because it says on these two hang all the law and the prophets. You love the Lord, the first half of the Ten Commandments. You love your neighbor, the second half. Now we tell my love all of a sudden. The title of the lesson is, How Can You Love God But Hate Your Brother? Yes. See, a lot of people, including your most thuggish people, they wear the cross around their neck. They say, God got me. That's why I'm so rich right now. You're rich yeah. for poisoning your people and killing people. But do you love your brother? No, I can't stand him. I'm going to get him next time I see him. No, y'all need to get together and go to class. Get that. All right? So if you go love him, you got to also, you gotta, if you love God, you got to love your brother too. On these two, hang all the commandments. All, all the law and the prophets. Am I making sense, Brother Julius? I, I, I'm going all the way back to the beginning of the lesson. You know, <laughs> how can you love God and hate your brother? Mm -hmm. I say, I'm, I'm going to dress myself up in purple and gold. Mm. I'm going to go out there on the street corner, Brother Josh. I'm going to uh, compel people to come and kiss my feet of mm -hmm. another race. Mm -mm. Call them the white devil hmm. and then say, I love God and say, uh, uh, they're going to serve us. That's hmm. hypocrisy. You got to love your neighbor, not the Israelite. You love your neighbor. Who your... is your neighbor? <laughs> Anybody next to you. That's right, brother. Could yeah. be your husband, could be your wife, could be your children, could be your boss. You know, Brother Julius, they love saying, that's right. Yeah, say that's right for this, all right? Because like I always tell the family here in Birmingham, when they saying that's right at that line, I say dead wrong. But you say that's right for this truth and loving your neighbor instead of hating them. Because you see how now how, how it is elevated. Wow. You know, brother, wow. now we're talking about your neighbor. So that sounds like inclusion of all people because the house of God is for all people, my brother. So we are at, uh, that was the end of verse 40. That was the end of verse 40. Thank you, Adrian Mason. She said, she said, uh, well, he said, I really needed to hear a message like this. I really, really needed it. All praise to the Almighty God of Israel. Thank you for praise listening God. in. Yes. Uh Cheryl Thomas says, she says, I say this all the time, Brother Josh. It's sad people carry their Bibles, but don't read them when their salvation depends upon it. Yes. The way Max said, the purple people leaders, they make <laughs> Israel look bad. <laughs> That's my brother Mac. He right here in Birmingham. He's telling the truth. Oh my goodness. Telling the truth. Oh my goodness. And, and now that we know that you're supposed to love your neighbor and everybody talks about they love God, God has some stipulation for all mankind. And let's take a look at it real quick. St. John chapter 14. We're we going to read verse 6 and then we're going to skip and read 13 through 14. Because a lot of people you got people that are atheists and say, well, I don't believe in God, but I love God. 
they'll call on him when they're in a bad situation. Oh God, yeah. oh God, oh who? I thought you didn't believe in him. <laughs> He's there for you. You got to come to him. Yeah. St. John 14 and verse 6. St. John 14 and 6. When you get my brother, please read. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you got some celebrities out there, especially this thick mustache, a comedian who has a talk show. He said, well, there are many ways to, to, to God, to heaven. Jesus just said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. All right? So family feud with that. Now, skip down to verse number 13 and read. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The, the, see, the Son never, when he was in the flesh, set, sought for any reputation. It was always to the glory of the Father, even when he raised Lazarus from the grave. It, it was just to glorify the Father the whole time. That's right. Go ahead and read, my brother. <laughs> if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes. If you love me, keep my commandments. Uh-oh. If you love me, keep my commandments. So there's a stipulation because a lot of people say, yeah, I, I, I'm going to pray uh, uh, for everything in your name. Okay, Lord, so I'll tell you what. If you love me, keep my commandments. Oh, Lord, we can't do that now. It's too hard. Oh, no, that's legalism. Yeah, legalism. You know, matter of fact, can't nobody keep that old law. Like I always say again, everybody wants to say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me when they want to hit that free throw. When they want to get that house, that job, or that money. Well, how about believing in that same verse for keeping God's commandments? I can do all things, including keep the law, whether they were 613 or 12,000. I can keep it with Jesus. <laughs> so you have to show that you love him by keeping his commandments. Wait and, a minute, Josh. Wait yeah. a minute. Now you're, going, now you're judging me. There's That's one judge. That what the lady told me. You judge. I said, sweetheart, I'm reading the book. I read the book. I'm yeah. reading the book. You the one that say you love God, but yeah. you don't do nothing that he say. What God? Who's God? Yes, that's right, brother. And I tell people too, there's a difference between judging and judgment. I can't throw you into a lake of fire or put you in the kingdom. I can show you what the righteous judge says, though, and I'm going to read what he says to you. That's right. There was the end of verse 15, right? That was the end of verse 15. All right. Let's go over to, I actually forgot to put that in the notes. So th thank you, brother, for continuing to read on that one. Let's go <laughs> Let's go over to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 7. Oh, Matthew man. chapter 7. We're going to read 14 through 23. I like to do some reading, um, family, so bear with me here. I like to read the book. Hey, the book says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. That's right, brother. Matthew 7, we're going to read 14 through 23, because people that profess to say they love God, then their actions, their works have to show such. And we're going to see that. And the Bible calls those works fruits. Matthew chapter 7 and 14, when you get it, my brother, please read. Because straight is the gate, mm -hmm. and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few that be that find it. Oh, so a few. So when you see these huge stadiums and arenas filled with people that profess to be Christians, that's actually not the majority. The majority is that narrow way. We're not speaking hate to anybody. We're not saying that we're better than anybody. But narrow is that way. All right? Keep reading. Beware of false prophets mm -hmm. which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. That's what they are. Go ahead. You shall know them by their fruits. Yes. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Go ahead. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Mm -hmm. But in corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So watch the way people operate. If you see somebody speaking evil against somebody, that, 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 whether they know them or not, they're showing you that they have these corrupt, rotten fruits from a rotten vessel. All right? But you see somebody who either is dealing with somebody righteously and speaking good of them, or even if they were wronged by that person and they still showing them love, that shows you how much God they have in them and yeah. they are showing you they have good fruits. Go, go ahead and read, my brother. Verse 18, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Right. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. But what, my brother? Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Uh-huh. 
Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. So we see that there is a end or a demise for, for, for trees that don't bear good fruit. It's yeah. the hewn down, cut down, and cast in the fire. We're not talking about out there working in your garden. This is a bigger picture because if you love God, but you hate your brother, you are actually one of those trees that don't bear good fruit and you will be hewn down and cast into fire. But before we get to see what that picture looks like, we're going to read further into people who claim to say, well, I love God because now we're into the love God part. We dealt with the hating your brother. Now, how can you love God? Well, is it by doing things, good things and not doing what he says? Let's see what the Bible says. Go ahead and read, my brother. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, mm. but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Go ahead, my brother. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not, have we not prophesied in thy name? Mm -hmm. And in thy name has cast out devils? Yes. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Now, mind you, family, these are success stories. We're not saying this is all hypothetical. People get these things done. Yeah. And they have missionaries. They go to these different countries. They build schools. They feed the hungry. They clothe the naked. They heal the sick. But is it, is that, and those are good things. But is that what God truly requires in all totality? It's not. He requires obedience. Yes. Because you can be a sodomite and feed a thousand people a day. Yeah. But a sodomite cannot dwell in the kingdom of the, the, the millennium kingdom, number one, let alone the father's kingdom, because you are corrupt. The same way our father Jesus, and mother in plain. the garden were corrupt in the garden. You can't do that because he can't work with that because you have the potential to go left field. And look what the Lord says to those who believe they did the right works. Look what he says to them. Go ahead and read. Verse 23. And then... This this hurts. This hurt. This hurts, sisters and brothers. Yeah, dude. Men, when I profess unto them, I never knew you. Mm. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So somebody says, well, hold, hold on a second. How could the Lord say he never knew me? Because to know him is to keep the commandments. He is literally telling you, you didn't keep the commandments, therefore I don't know you and I can't deal with you. You need, you need to go somewhere. Is it down the street? Is it out of the country? Is it in prison? It's far worse than that, actually, because the temperature is about to be raised at this point. And now we're going to see the demise of those who don't want to do what God says, especially those that hate their brothers and are hypocrites and they love God, because we read earlier that if you love God, you also love your brother. Brother Judge, you got something you want to say before we go to the next the, part? The, the, 23rd, the 23rd verse is, 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 is powerful. I never depart from me. But Lord, we fed the hungry in your name. And we gave out, we had a great clothing drive. Mm -hmm. Oh man, we did the Easter baskets. Mm -hmm. Lord, we found the biggest tree and put the biggest star on top of it. Yes. I never knew you. Depart from me. But Lord, the homeless people, Lord, the homeless people, it was cold and we sheltered them, Lord. And we and we set up heaters and we set up tents and we gave them shelter. Lord. Um, mm -mm. did you keep the Passover? That's what done away with. <laughs> what what, what? De depart from me? Mm -hmm. The the book says it's gonna be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't want that hit, Josh. I don't want it, brother. I don't want it for anybody. And I know you don't. But yet, some go find themselves themselves there. My Lord. Y'all forgive my, my, my emotion, my passion, because the Lord is trying to, to save us in every way conceivable. Right. But men love darkness rather than light. Josh? Yes, sir. Man, hmm. I gotta last... watch this again. I see you, Rob. I see you, Rob Lowe. I gotta, I gotta watch this again, Josh. I gotta watch it again. Where we going, bro? It's our last spot right here, family. Revelation twenty. Oh man, we're gonna read verses eleven through fifteen. This is the demise. Um, I, well, let me change that. This is the end for those who went the righteous uh, way and the unrighteous way. These are those that love God and love their brother. 
And this is for those who say they love God, but they hate their brother. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, verses 11 through 15. Revelation 20, verses 11 through 15, my beloved brother, when you get it, let's edify the people. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. You just left from depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. This is that time. Go ahead and read. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Yes. And the books were open. Yes. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And what happened? And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. But we read about all these good works that people did. But the Lord said, depart from me. So you obviously was lacking something. And the Lord is so good with pinpointing what you're lacking. The same way with the young rich ruler. Yes. I did all these things for my youth up. Yeah, but you lack something, brother. I tell you what, go sell all you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure with me. And, you and, know, and follow me. And follow me. And he turned around and walked away sorrowful, weeping and gnashing of teeth. You are seeing people who are being judged out of the books here. And their, and their works are matching up with what needs to be done. As a matter of fact, in the book of life, their works are matching up with the book that we are all reading out of tonight. Keep reading, my brother. Man. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they will judge every man according to their works. Notice it didn't say every Israelite, okay? Every man. Every man according to their works, male, female, short, fat, rich, or poor. You will be judged according to your work. Talking to me too, family. All right. I'm just the vessel bringing the word tonight, but I'm terrified right now as well. According to their works. Go ahead and read. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Learning something on our way to learning something. People say hell is only when you're in the burning condition. It says that hell was thrown into the lake of fire. That concept of death is being done away with, okay? Yeah. But also the people that are disobedient, they are being tossed away into this fire as well. Last verse, my brother, verse number 15. And whosoever, whosoever yes. was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Don't be there, family. Don't claim that you love God and hate your brother. It's not worth it. I pray that I made some sense tonight. I wrote this in my car in about 30 minutes from scratch, and I pray that the Lord gave me the right word to give everybody. Thank you for your time. I'm, 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 I'm sitting here, Brother Josh. Uh, what, what say you, sisters and brothers? <laughs> what say you? I'm looking at this. I'm, look, I'm looking at this. Y'all know how I am about it. Mm. Uh, what say you, sisters and brothers? You know, and, and there's um, even a hacker in here with some uh, from a, a rated X site. I hope you got some edification, triple X, by uh, the way. But, uh, to, to the hacker, I, I didn't see it. Thank you for catching it, brother. I didn't see it. But to the hacker or hackers, remember, yes, who for thought every idle word is going to be accounted for, and everything you type is going to be accounted for. That's right, brother. Your unbelief shall not stop prophecy. Amen. So therefore, Brother Josh, thank you for a um, much needed and wonderful lesson. Thank man, you, it, 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 I'm looking at the comments, man. I'm looking at the comments. And uh, like I said, that's that's why I wanted my brother to come back to the bomb because I knew he had something to put on the table for all of us. And I mean for all of us. How can you love God but hate your brother? Let's change tonight. Let's graduate tonight, sisters and brothers. Let's begin to develop the spirit mind, the mind that God wants us to have. Because if you don't develop that mind, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yes, sir. I'm going to land right there, brother. I want to thank any, any last words, brother Josh. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Enough said. Enough said. I concur. <laughs> Out of the mouth of two witnesses. So we thank you for the time that you spent with us tonight. Thank you for going a little over with us. Thank my daughter, Sister Genesis. And um, man, uh, uh, 
I just I, I'm I'm so grateful to be a part of this platform on Thank behalf you. of Brother Will, on behalf of Team Bomb. Man, subscribe, like, share all and all of the Israel guys platform, sisters and brothers. All of them are wonderful. And support all of them, sisters and brothers, because when you support this ministry, it goes out into all the world. So somebody on the question and answer last night said, the Israel of God only got 5,000 members. <laughs> wow. <laughs> For that person that said that, my message would be, why don't you focus on the message instead of the numbers? Oh, by the way, the Lord said, my flock is the little flock. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see you, <laughs> God willing, if it's the Lord's will, like my brother Melvin said, if the creek don't rise, we'll see you on tomorrow. I have to teach tomorrow night. Join us Friday, Israel of God, Friday night. So uh, prayer services for whatever the Lord put up on my mind, sisters and brothers. But hey, Josh, thank you again for coming in on such short notice, my brother. Yes, of sir. course, you know we'll have you back. But until yes. then, brother, I bid you and your house peace in the name of Jesus. Peace, brother. And to you also, sisters and brothers, good evening. Bless Sabbath to all. And be safe out there. Remember, we still got this COVID thing out here. It's back yes. on the rise. Protect yourself, sisters and brothers. Yes. And look out for one another and love one another. In the mighty name of Jesus, good night. Baby girl, you got my mom? The bomb of Gilead, give me the remedy. Father, correct my path. The bomb of Gilead, you all that I ever need and all that I ever had. The bomb of Gilead, don't keep on healing me. Father, protect my path.